Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and you are very welcome. Now, you all have seen from the thumbnail the title, and if you've read any of it, the description. That this palette, this palette, this film is discussing neutral palettes. Which, given my makeup today and the majority of content on my channel, you're probably wondering whether I've been abducted by aliens and this is a pod person sitting here. I can assure you I'm not, uh, and it isn't, and it's definitely still me. Basically I was sorting through reorganising my palettes a couple of days ago because oh, I've got two indie companies, Blush Tribe and uh, I'm a Glitter OMG, that no longer exist. And much as how I love their palettes, obviously I'm not going to want to use them on screen as much. Because, well, you can't get them. Um, I may end up at some point depotting them into other palettes. So I've got a load of singles where I can dupe palettes and stuff. Um, I haven't decided. But what I did discover when I was doing this and shuffling palettes around is that I, for someone who loves colourful shadows, I've got an awful lot of neutral palettes, or what I would class as a neutral palette. So I thought that you might be interested to know what I would class as my top 10 neutral palettes. I've also got six or seven honorary mentions. But I've definitely got a top 10 of neutral palettes that I reach for on a regular basis. And I thought you'd be interested to know what they are because if you, like me, are into colour and you find neutral palettes boring, you may find the palettes that I mention here more interesting. Mm. Because if they interest me, then there's a good chance they'll interest you. Sorry, I am just checking because that buzzed as an email and I am I am waiting desperately to get my early access email so I can get on and order the Nikki Tutorials palette. <laughs> hmm. So if, if you if my phone buzzes I will be distracted for a few seconds each time. For which I apologise in advance. Now because my pain levels are still off the chart, I've not dragged all 17 of these palettes out. Because you can bet your bottom dollar I'll drop some of them and I'll probably break my favourites. So what I'm going to do instead is put pictures of them here. Which might be easier anyway, because with some of them where I'm nearly hitting pan it's not always as easy to tell the colours, um, as it is when it's one of their promotional photographs. So, if you want to find out what this colourful makeup lover classes as interesting neutral palettes, then as I've said for some time, oft here echoed elsewhere, let's imagine two channels. Even Sammy the Sloth Straw 
is interested to know. And he recommends, as do I, that you grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, get comfy, get ready. Because here it comes. Right. Let's get the honourable mentions out of the way. Now, some of the palettes I mention could be from companies that I don't promote on my channel as frequently as I used to for whatever reason or that I have stopped promoting on my channel or who are on a I'm watching you you're kind of behaving yourself I might start using them again so honorary mentions the two of the Laura Lee palettes the first one I got was the cat's pajamas which I liked because as well as the brown row it had your burgundy plummy purpley row as well because for me my ideal neutral if I was going to just put one colour through my crease as a neutral shade it would be Buon Fresco from Anastasia which is like a, um, a dusky grey mauve colour or mauve colour so I appreciated the fact that her first palette although it was bloody confusing because the outside of the palette was all sparkly and glittery and, and then you opened up the inside and there was like flowers everywhere and it was called cat's pyjamas and you're like <sighs> pick a theme and stick to it love will you that being said it was very good quality um, I didn't try either of her little palettes the boss bag or the party animal um, but because by that point in time I'd the whole drama gate thing happened for you know, the first one. God, you remember that? Oh, I need to wiggle. Sorry, hang on. Oh. I may have to do that a few times. I mean, I'm in quite a bit of pain, and I have already filmed this makeup look, so I've already sat here for quite a while. Hi. Sorry folks, it takes your breath away sometimes. Right, um, yeah by that time I'd kind of, I'm not going to support a racist on my channel. Since then, there was that awful crying apology and then a different apology and, and then she did work with a homeless shelter or something. But she's kind of been keeping her head below the ramparts. Um, so I very recently, so recently in fact, it's actually on the table in front of me, um, picked up her Nudie Patootie palette from Depop. Um, and I sanitised it, had a quick play when it first arrived. And I actually really like the feel of those, it, the, the quality of the shadows from you can't go by how a swatch performs as to how the shadow is going to perform but you can tell from how a shadow feels how it's going to perform most of the time um, and like I said I had a quick play with a brush and sort of on my arm kind of thing um, and I was actually really quite impressed with that palette 
another one on my honorary mentions. Uh, we've got a couple of colour pops. We've got the Proceed with Caution, which I believe was a collab palette. Can't remember who with because my fibro brain has just. Um, if any of you can remember who that Proceed with Caution palette was collabed with, please let me know. Um, and also, their first palette that they did, because they, they'd only sold singles before, I believe, and I'm, I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure their first ever palette was the Yes Please palette, which was a dupe for the Natasha Denona Sunset. Her, one of her first ones. Um, so those two are both staples in my collection. Um, yes Please got used a lot when I first got it, particularly that yellow. I really like that yellow. Um, the first ever palette that I bought once I started getting into makeup, because prior to that I'd sort of I'd pick up a trio or a duo or a single shadow or a quad. The first actual palette that I picked up, i.e., more than half a dozen shades in it, was the Makeup Revolution Neutrals versus Neutrals, the first one. And again, this one I really like because you had a row of cool toned neutrals and a row of warm toned neutrals. Um, and I, that's where I realised that cool toned neutrals look better on me. That's when I first started to understand actually I've got neutral to cool toned skin. Um, and that really helped with undertones and foundations and whatnot. So that definitely has to have a bit of a mention. Um, surprisingly a Morphe palette has made the list it's one that I filmed with not that long ago um, one of their 9 pan palettes, one of the new ones the 9V which is the vintage rose I was really surprised with just how well that palette performed um, so it's it's definitely on my honourable mentions. I was I picked it up because it intrigued me, the colour story intrigued me, and every time I saw it it kept bugging me and I thought I'm gonna have to buy it, even if it's trash and I end up passing it on or getting rid or whatever. I have to know, it. I have to try, I have to find out. I actually quite like it. It seems like the smaller the palette, the better the quality with Morphe. And the other honorary mention would be my Violet Voss hashtag palette, which I will admit I bought mainly for rows two and four, the yellow row and the purple row. And those are the rows I've used the most. But it's a very nice palette, very good quality shadows. But that's the end of my honorary mentions. Getting into uh, my top ten. From all, please. We're going to start off with. It's a recent one. And it's ABH Amrezy. Again, this is one which initially didn't intrigue me at all. But then I saw Paulina use it a lot on her channel, especially the shade Barb, which she hit pan on so fast because she was using it pretty much every time she used the palette. Um, and I got intrigued and again someone on Depop was selling it cheap so I thought, you know what, why not? You know, I like ABH quality, I've got uh, subculture Riviera. This is a job for the Riviera kid. Um, Prism and B 
the Alyssa Edwards one so why not grab the Amrazy one see what it's like yeah I really like it folks really like it definitely recommend Coming in at number nine is, I think this is probably, no, I think in terms of number of shadows, it's not the smallest, but overall physical size of palette, it's the smallest. I, I said I wasn't going to get them out and show you, but is it close enough? And no, it's not. So I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go digging for it. The Viseart Petite Pro Number One. It's a very tiny little palette. It's about the size of this Cover FX blush duo, but it's eight shades in it. I will admit, when I first picked it up, I wasn't expecting it to be quite that small. I ordered it online. Um, was a little bit shocked, but now I know how long it takes to go through a shadow. I'm like, oh, fair enough. Um, and Viseart are quite expensive anyway. But that was an ideal palette um, when I was working and going on regular tours around the country and around Europe um, doing battlefield tours with the Legion which is where I used to work before you know my, my health got, well I got made redundant and then my health got really bad and, anyway long story the Petite Pro 1 is exactly the kind of palette I would have packed to take on tour with me because there's enough in there to do day to night time it's small it's compact it's not going to weigh a huge amount not an issue for coach tours but if you're flying somewhere um, so I definitely definitely love that one that's definitely a, a recommend coming in at number eight we have a color pop and it's a blush crush which is a, a more recent one um, this I would have ranked it higher but it's a bit too pastel-y a lot of my black friends wouldn't be able to wear this without it looking ashy it really is a sort of It's a, a light to medium skin tone palette, that one. But it is really nice. And again, if you've got, if you're looking to do a quick five minute job because you're running late for work, that's ideal. Just straight in, bish bosh bosh, one colour. Maybe smack a bit of shimmer on the lid if you want to, or one of the lighter shades, mascara lip gloss out the door done um, but as I said it really wouldn't work for deeper skin tone which is why it's not higher up my list coming in next this is the smallest in terms of number of shadows and this is the Dose of Colours Marvelous Mauves, or Marvelous Marves, as they would say in America. All matte palette, all in the same colours theme, doesn't need thinking about, can take you from day to night. Yes, it hasn't got a shimmer in it, but if you like shimmer, you're going to have a highlight with you, you can use that. It's that simple. It's a really good quality, basic palette that will take you from 
work to an evening event seamlessly and without having to think too much about it and they blend really really well together as well so even the deeper colours blend as easily as the lighter ones do which is unusual when you're talking about mattes number six is a palette again that initially when I saw it I poo pooed it I didn't want it and then I saw reviews with it and I believe it was Teresa is Dead that caught me on this one and it's the Urban Decay Naked Honey Palette. I really like this palette. I know a lot of people don't. But I really like this palette. Um, you can get a lot. Yes, okay, a lot of the looks that you get from this are going to look similar. But isn't that true of all Urban Decay Naked palettes? Each Naked palette basically has a colour theme. And you're either going to get a lighter version of it, a deeper version of it, or a shimmery version of it. But it's going to pretty much look the same. Just depth of tone and reflection but I do like that um, I use that a lot more than I thought I was going to we are into the top five ba, 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 ba. coming at number five is a Kaleidos makeup and it's the cyber bronze palette now when I picked this up picked it up mainly for the red and the silver I'm perfectly honest I didn't think I would get much use out of the rest of that palette I've got a lot of use out of that palette and not just the red and the silver <laughs> the Kaleidos formula is lush um, and yes before you ask I've seen the new stuff that they're uh, promoing to come out early September and yes I want the lilac palette yes I'll probably cave and buy the lilac palette um, but yeah that cyber bronze palette is really really nice um, one of the nicest reds I've ever used uh, so that's again a really good one to take you from work through to evening especially um, coming up to sort of Christmas and New Year with that red and that silver you can get some really amazing looks with that number four is a palette that up until recently I wouldn't have been able to buy because I had such a phobia of butterflies and moths don't get me wrong still can't do moths but I'm just about managing to tolerate butterflies now couldn't even bear even a picture of them so of course I'm talking about the Flutterby palette. Again, this for me is my ideal neutral palette in terms of colour tone. It's neutral, but it's neutral mauve rather than neutral brown. Um, because I've got neutral to cool toned skin, warm tone browns, People always say how nice they look on me, but I'm, I don't mind cool tone browns, but then a lot of those end up more towards your taupes and your greys and this kind of ecru sort of colour. Um, so I, I, I normally struggle, but which is why I prefer mauves, because it is a cool toned, you know, it's a grey based purple effectively because mauve is on the purple spectrum or burgundy you know whichever you prefer whichever depending on which uh, cones you have in your eye as to whether you see it more purple or more burgundy either way it's a cool tone shade um, and I really really like 
the colours in that palette uh, and I use it a lot. Top three. Number three is a W7 palette. It's one that I picked up because I was, I still am so tempted by the Natasha Denona gold palette. I don't know why I'm not normally drawn to neutral palettes but there was something about that palette that just captured my attention but I just couldn't afford it. it mm -mm. I was hoping it would come up maybe in Black Friday as a you know, 50% off, maybe even 60% off if I was lucky. Um, but then W7 bought out their 24K Gold Rush palette, which is the dupe for it. And I used it and I'm like, I really like this. I love this colour scheme. This is, And it's a really, again, W7 can be a bit hit and miss with their palettes. But this one is a hit. This is one of their good ones. And I've seen people actually compare the Natasha Denona to the W7 and they have said the formulas are comparable. So I'm kind of, maybe I don't need the Natasha Denona. I want the Natasha Denona but I don't need the Natasha Denona. Because I have the colour scheme in a W7 palette. If someone was going to gift me the Natasha Denona gold palette, I wouldn't throw it back in their face. But I don't feel the urge to save up for it and, and go and buy it now. <clears throat> Which is good. Top two are both UK indie brands. Which I am so pleased for. Coming in at number two is the Melanin Fantasy palette from Brown Melanin Makeup. Now, I discovered them recently. I discovered them earlier this year. Um, it, during one of my Painsomnia, scrolling through Instagram, and it popped up randomly. And I saw the palette, liked it, went to the website, ordered it. Managed to dive back off. Got out the next day, checked my emails, and went, Oh, I ordered a palette last night. <laughs> Thankfully, it's a palette that I like. Um, I like it a lot. It's really, really good quality. Buttery mattes that blend so well together. Um, I'm, I'm really, I've had some real dodgy pain insomnia purchases but this was a good one which I'm pleased about so I should be keeping an eye out to see what else they bring out see if there's any other palettes that call to me and now finally number one palette and it's not because I've got a discount code with them before you ask I genuinely looked at which palette I'd used the most out of all of my neutral palettes and it's the September Rose Brew palette. Very reminiscent of the Colourpop Yes Please and therefore very reminiscent of the Natasha Denona Sunset and Sunrise palettes, but when this came out, when, when uh, Michelle released this, I messaged her saying, uh, can I be sneaky and use my own discount code when I'm ordering for myself? And um, she said to me, well, I didn't think you'd be interested in this one. I said, yeah, because I bought the original Slush palette. Um, and then she very, very kindly sent me Brew. And she sent me slush too. 
This did not, however, affect my opinions when I was reviewing them. There was something she said to me. I didn't think you'd be interested in this because it's a it's it's a neutral palette. I said, yeah, but it's not boring neutral. I said, you've got yellows, you've got oranges, you've got kind of murky, greeny, browny tones. You've got burgundy. There's there's colours in there. Other than just, it's not just shades of warm brown and a black and a white. Um, and it arrived, and do you know what? I, I love that palette, I really do. Um, I reach for it, I very often, I use this a lot for kind of one and done looks where I'm in a lot of pain, I need to just throw something on my face so that I look halfway decent because I don't know, I'm going to be meeting you know, Chrissy's godparents for the first time or I don't know, one of his cousins is, is over for a visit or I'm going to shoot down and see my dad and don't want to scare him with how ill I'm look, you know, how pale and pasty I'm looking without anything on my face or you know, I'm going to go and see the gold kids and don't want them going, oh, honey, Angie, why have you got such black circles under your eyes? Because you know what kids are like, out the mouths of babes and all that. And if I know that I just want a reliable palette that I can just pick up a fluffy blender, dip in, do a over the lid, Blend it up through the crease, fade it out, bit of mascara, bit of lip gloss, done. That's the palette I reach for. Because no matter which colour you pick from that palette, it'll work. It'll work as a one and done, it'll work blended with other colours, it'll work blended with other palettes, it'll work blended with other companies palettes because very often you'll find that I don't know, ABH is very much like this, if you try and combine ABH with a different palette it doesn't always blend that well together but if you use two different ABH palettes they'll blend fine because technically it's the same base formula But it doesn't always. Sorry, a lot of talking. It doesn't always translate well or play well with other types or other brands or other formulations of shadows. That will work with any of the shadows that I've used in my collection. That works on no base on your lids. That works on Urban Decay Primer Potion. That works on Tarte Shape Tape. That works on um, White Concealer Base. It works on Mac Soft Ochre Paint Pot. It works on Gerard Cut Crease Canvas. Works on the Crow and Pebble, which is the one, my default one that I go to. But like I said, most importantly, it will perform without any primer at all. So on days when my pain is so bad I physically cannot sit here for long enough to film I can't even sit here for long enough to you know put a full eye makeup on let alone do the whole face I'll put a couple of dots of concealer on my under eyes blend that out powder it just the under eye not the rest of the face 
grab that palette, choose a colour, one and done it up without any primer, mascara, either lip gloss or lip salve, and done. And even with no primer and oily eyelids, that has never creased on me. Not once. And that's pretty damn amazing. So, that is my number one palette, my number one recommendation. I will... I was going to say I'll list them down in the description box, but that kind of ruins the fun if you've read the description box and not watched the film. Maybe I'll put an end screen up so you can do a photo. You know, you can you can do a, a screen capture of the overall list at the end of the film in case you wanted to know what my top ten palettes, neutral palettes for colourful eye lovers. Now, if you have ever collabed with me. I challenge you to do this. Look through your collection if you are a neutral lover I want you to give me your top 10 colourful palettes if you are a colourful lover like myself I want you to give me your top 10 neutral palettes or as many as you can depending on how many you've got in your collection because I would find that really interesting to see A, do we agree, do we have um, you know, do we agree on which the neutral palettes are the best ones? I mean, uh, I beg your pardon, I do hope that burp didn't come up on camera, it probably did I'll try and muffle it a little bit had no warning that was coming at all. See, the thing is, I've got two UK indie brands as my one and two. And although I have got an American drugstore brand, i.e. Colourpop, there could be brands that you use over there that we can't get here. Um, I mean, a lot of the... Um, oh, the Drew Barrymore one. What's it called? You know, yeah, that one. A lot of her line we can't get over here. Hard Candy I've never seen over here. Um, the Rock I've not seen over here, or the Rack. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of, a lot of palettes and stuff that you get over in America that we can't get here. Same in, in Australia. You know, you have palettes there that we can't get here. So, I would be really interested. If you love colour, do me your top ten or as many as you can. Neutral palettes from your collection. If you love neutral, give me your top 10 or as many as you can colourful palettes in your collection and why. <laughs> right, I'm in significant pain having sat here and filmed two films, so I'm going to stop. Um, if you are one of my regular viewers, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you. Um, Last time they did an update, not only did they knock everybody's uh, notification choice from all to personalised, so I had to go through and change mine back to all for the ones that I wanted. Uh, apparently they're not sending out emails at the moment because they're blocking people's emails up. Yes, but if we've subscribed to a channel and rung the bell and said we want all notifications 
That means we want the emails in our inbox. But then, you know, YouTube didn't bother to tell us that they were changing the system. And so the likelihood of them changing the system again in a fortnight's time and suddenly sending emails again without telling anybody? Pretty high. So it's worth double checking and just making sure your notifications are still on and that they do still say all notifications uh, just in the hope that they do get turned back on again at some point so that we can be notified when our favourite creators upload a film. If you've managed to stumble over me somehow, hi, hello, welcome, hope you've enjoyed it here. Uh, I blethered a lot in this film, but I'm in considerable pain today. Uh, when I'm in considerable pain, I either go quiet or I blether a lot. Today, you got blethering. However, it'd be lovely if you would like to join before a family. It's super easy to do, just down there somewhere. There's a little red button, hit that, turn it to a grey, and then you can ring the bell and choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube do actually pull their finger out and start sending emails again. But in the meantime, while you're waiting for them to do that, if you are looking for some me time, I've got an awful lot of other films you can watch. I've got this makeup tutorial for a start. I've got more wearable, neutral, work appropriate <laughs> tutorials. I've got product reviews. I've got tags, challenges, collabs. I'm even reading my favourite poem. So basically, grab a drink, grab a snack. Pick your feet up, pick a playlist, and enjoy. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.